but I thought, man, I need to figure out a way to maybe use this one more time before we take it all down. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Thursday, June 29th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna see if we can repurpose our indeterminate tomato trellis, maybe get one more round of cucumbers going. But before we do that, I wanna show you some of these beautiful peppers we've got here in this plot behind me. So these pepper plants may not look huge, and they aren't, but they're really pretty, nice and dark green, and they've been really, really productive for us so far. So let's start out with these chocolate ghost peppers here, which I've been really, really impressed with. These plants are starting to load up with fruits, as you can see there. Now we'll want to wait till those turn nice and dark brown, get maximum flavor on them before we harvest them. And my buddy Mark, over in the big city of Cairo, Georgia, is going to be using these to make lots of delicious treats. Can't wait to see what he comes up with. I know these are going to be pretty tasty, those chocolate peppers like that usually are. And down the road from those chocolate ghost peppers, I've got two chocolate habanero plants here. I had more, but some of them just didn't make it for whatever reason. These have turned the corner a good bit lately. They're looking a lot better than they did. This little plant here broke off at one point, but it grew back. Starting to get some flowers on those, no fruits yet, but those should be tasty too. And then next we've got a whole row of my favorite pepper for making hot sauces, all kind of good stuff like that. So these are the Santa Fe Grand Peppers. They start out yellow and start to turn kind of orange like that and then they'll eventually get red if you leave them on the plant. These are about ready to pick. We usually like to pick kind of a mixture of colors, orange and red, and then ends up making a nice citrusy flavor for our sauces nice color too so about three hours southwest of us there's a little beach town called mexico beach florida and there's a restaurant there called killer seafood one of the best seafood places along the panhandle in my opinion now they have this little hot sauce they make there can't really buy it anywhere but you can use it when you eat there and it's got some horseradish in it not sure what else is in it but this past year i tried to kind of make my own version of that so i took some of these santa fe grand peppers here fermented them, blended them up, added some vinegar, added some of our homegrown horseradish. And I won't say I got it perfectly like Killer Seafood has, but I got it pretty dang close. It was mighty delicious. So I can't wait to make some more of that. And then on our third row here, we've got our favorite bell pepper variety, which is King Arthur. We got one plant there. It looks like it's struggling a little bit, not keeping pace with the others. And like I said, these plants don't look very big, but we've been getting some really nice peppers off these. Now these two that I just pulled aren't quite as big as some that I harvested a couple days ago, so they will get a little bigger than this. But this is big enough, nice blocky bells. And that's why I like this King Arthur variety so much. The next to those bell peppers is a variety that I'm growing for the first time, but that I am super, super impressed with. I don't know if you can see all those fruits in there. So this is that Altiplano Serrano variety. Really nice size on those for Serrano. And these plants are absolutely loaded up. I've been slicing these up and eating them on just about everything. Sometimes I cook them, sometimes I just put them on there raw. Got a little bit of heat, but not too hot just loving this variety so far now next to the serranos we have these mirasol peppers these are the authentic new mexico chilies that are so popular over there in the southwest and these plants have a lot of fruits on them but they just don't look near as good as all the other pepper plants in this plot and they have been treated exactly the same seems like i ran into this problem a little bit last year i don't know if these varieties just don't like it over here in the southeast if they prefer the southwest i don't know what it is we'll get some good harvest off those but i wish the plants looked a little more like those and then lastly we have some peppers that i'm really really excited about i feel like i've been looking for a good hybrid for this type of pepper for a long time and i think i finally found it look at those puppies there those things are absolutely huge got a few of them over there that's starting to turn a little bit but man, that plant is loaded up with nice big peppers. So Bono might not have found what he was looking for, but I think I did. 
So a few days ago, I posted a picture of one of these beautiful Masilla peppers on our Facebook and Instagram pages. And I had someone comment, a really interesting comment, about kind of the regional preferences for hot peppers. So what she was saying was, in the southwestern part of the country, they really like these New Mexico chilies here, or hatch chilies. Then in the northeastern part of the country, they prefer these Italian long hots here. And then down here where we are in the southeast, the popular hot pepper is called a jawala or a finger hot. Now in the past, I have been guilty of calling this a finger hot, but upon further investigation, a jawala or finger hot pepper that are really popular down here look like a long, skinny cayenne. This bigger, thicker pepper here looks more like an Italian long hot. Now I know we've got viewers from all over the country, so let me know in the comments below what type of hot pepper, what types of hot peppers are really popular where you live and if you've ever noticed these kind of regional differences in hot pepper preference. And one more thing about these peppers before we scoot on over to the other side of the dream garden. This is something I've known for a while, but something I always haven't been that great at implementing. Peppers really like to be spoon fed. We've talked a lot about spoon feeding in the past. So this year I've been making a conscious effort to spoon feed these peppers, feed them just a little bit every couple weeks. I actually did it yesterday. Just been mixing up some of the AgriThrive fruit and flour in a five gallon bucket and taking a little pitcher, pouring a little bit beside each plant. They seem to be really liking it and rewarding us with some nice production. Now over here where you all have witnessed the demise of many of these indeterminate tomato plants and probably gonna lose a few more with 97 and 99 degrees on the way in the next few days. I thought there should be a good way to reuse this trellis here. We bought this last year and we used it again this year. Doesn't really take long to set up, but I thought, man, I need to figure out a way to maybe use this one more time before we take it all down. Now I'm obviously not gonna plant any more tomatoes here, but I think we might can get away with one more planting of cucumbers. We had some cucumbers over there in the raised bed plot. We got pretty good harvest from the Excelsior pickling variety that we grew. The Corinto variety was just starting to produce well and then the storms kind of blew our trellis down. Ended up having just to cut those plants and figured I'd start over somewhere else. I think this is gonna be a great spot to do it. So I've still got one decent looking tomato plant in the middle of that row, but at the beginning of the row here and at the end of the row, I've got a little 10 foot stretch where I think we can kind of thread some of this Hortanova trellis along that piece of conduit there, make a nice little hanging trellis that our cucumbers can climb on. So what I should be able to do here is just pull that piece of conduit out of that elbow right there, thread some Hortanova on here, and stick it right back in there. Let's see how it goes. All right, so that worked out perfect, quick and easy, and I sure do like it when a plan comes together. I'm a little bit crooked down here, got a little bit slant on the bottom, but that'll be all right. Those cucumbers will be that tall before they start putting out tendrils anyway. Now, normally I wouldn't plant cucumbers this far into summer. I did back when we were selling our veggies and I needed that continual production. But this year, I'm just trying to make up for what we lost over there in the raised bed garden. We really never had enough to pickle. We were just eating most of them fresh. So hopefully we get a little more production here. We can at least put up a few jars of pickles. Not gonna have super high expectations for these cucumbers, but we should get some production. And another reason I'm doing this, I just wanna use up the rest of these seeds that we bought back in the spring. I try not to carry over seeds too much from one year to the next. So this would be a good way to use up the rest of these two packets here. So we're gonna be planting more Excelsior pickling cucumbers, more Corinto slicers. We'll probably put the Corintos on the end there, the picklers on this side of the row. And I've also got some seeds here. Janice from Myrtle Beach sent me some Supremo seeds, which is another pickling variety that I really like. And since we've already got drip tape buried here, the setup or planting on these should be pretty easy. I am gonna level out these hills a little bit where our tomatoes were planted. Just kinda try to get that a little bit more level there. Then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of Nature Safe 855 right along the top of that mound there. Gives a little pre-plant fertilizer. And I'm gonna make me a little bitty planting furrow here with my triangle hoe. 
And then we're going to drop some seeds. I'm going to start off with what I have left of these Excelsior seeds here. And then we'll switch over to Supremo. Have a nice little 10 foot stretch of pickles. And now that those are covered up and tamped down a little bit, we'll do the same thing on the end of the row with our Corinto slicers. And there we go. Just like that, we have officially repurposed this trellis here. Got 10 foot of slicers right there and 10 foot of pickles down there. Now, if you're like me and crazy enough to try to squeeze in one more round of cucumbers, I would highly recommend picking a variety that has some built-in disease resistance like the Excelsior or the Supremo there. Don't pick something like your Boston pickling cucumber or whatever, just a plain Jane variety. It's probably not going to do that well planted in the middle of summer. But with some of these more disease resistant varieties, you can get some production out of them for at least a little while. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below, including companies like AgriThrive, which is what we've been using on those beautiful pepper plants over there. Go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to hear more about the whole spoon feeding thing, check out this video right here. When we did a few weeks ago, we were feeding these watermelon plants. We'll show you just how easy it is to mix up a solution in a five gallon bucket and give it to those plants. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.